Welcome to Let's Talk Investing, a co-production of the Globe and Mail and the Investor Education Fund. I'm Rob Carrick, personal finance columnist at the Globe and Mail, and with me is Preet Banerjee. Preet is the author of the WhereDoesAllMyMoneyGo.com blog, and he's also an ex-investment advisor. Preet and I are going to talk about saving for a house when you're in your 20s. Preet, houses cost three, four hundred thousand dollars on average, depending on what city you live in. How much do I need to save before I should get into the market? That's a good question. Uh, the you know the conventional thought was that you know you should save twenty percent to avoid the uh, the CMHC fees. Um, however, I mean if you take a look at housing prices, that's so completely unrealistic for most uh, students graduating uh, uh, recently. Um, what I would suggest is if you have the ability to stay at home with your parents for a couple of years, uh, go out and figure out what your mortgage payment would be. Put that aside, and if you can maintain that monthly savings for two, three years, not and only... And suck it up and stay with mom and dad for a while. Right, yeah. If you can do that, uh, right. then what you'll find is, A, you can make those payments, you're ready to take on a mortgage, and you'll find that you'll have twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in a couple of years. Now, how do I save for a house? I mean, what do I put my money in that's nice and safe that'll give me a decent return? Sure. Um, it's, you know, when you have a time frame of, you know, even as long as three or five years, I personally would lean towards very safe investments like GICs, high interest savings account. The worst thing you want to happen is you you save you know twenty thousand dollars and you find out that it's worth ten thousand dollars because you started to because uh, you wanted to risk it in the stock market. So what about a high interest savings account like the the ING directs accounts and that sort of thing? Is that is that what you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, ideally, you want to find one that has no fees, uh, no monthly fees, etc., because those just eat into your returns. Now, how much do you put aside? Like, I mean, it's, a, it's such a tall order to save for a house, and it's, you know, it's tens of thousands of dollars. How do you, what guidelines can you give me for how much to put aside off my monthly paycheck for this? Um, again, um, my recommendation is if you're looking at buying a house, you should have an idea as to what the purchase price should be. Um, you can find an online mortgage calculator and figure out what your monthly payment should be. Um, and you should be putting that away at least per month because you know that if you can make that monthly savings, you can afford that mortgage. What insight can you give people uh, towards the costs of housing that aren't reflected in the mortgage? Because if you own a house, you know the mortgage is far from the only cost of owning a house. What other costs are there? Right. Well, uh, of course, you've got uh, the maintenance. If you're uh, purchasing a house that uh, doesn't have condo fees, you can almost expect to, s to pay that amount um, in, in maintaining the property. You have to save up for you know, periodic roof replacements. Um, you have uh, property taxes. Um, there's uh, there's an endless list of fees. You have your utilities, you have uh, all the monthly bills, phone, TV, etc. Uh, so just the mortgage payment is not enough. Now mortgage is another form of debt and we've got we've already talked about how 20-somethings often have considerable amount of student debt and they probably owe some money on their credit cards. How much debt can you afford to carry? I, mean, I know the, uh, the lending industry has all these ratios that they use, but what guidelines can you give us? Right. Uh, so there are sort of industry accepted uh, guidelines as to how much debt you could theoretically carry. What I would suggest is just because you're allowed to carry X amount of debt doesn't mean you have to. Um, you want to try and live within your means, which a lot of people don't. Um, so, I mean, the standard ratios are 32% uh, for the... Uh, uh, 32% of? Of your gross income. Okay, so, yeah, so the, the top line on your paycheck. Yeah. Right. Um, so anyways, whatever these metrics are, um, you know, uh, I would say you can take a look at where you want to live, figure out what the mortgage payment is going to be, and then see if it's comfortable. If it doesn't feel right or it feels like a stretch, then it's probably too much for you. Okay, last question. Pre what about renting? Is that so bad? You know what? Renting isn't that bad. Um, uh, you have a lot of costs that you don't have to pay for. Um, you know, you pay sort of one bill every month and you may or may not pay utilities on top of that, but it generally tends to be less than a mortgage payment and the maintenance, et cetera, that goes along with home ownership. And if you can take that difference between what it would cost for home ownership and renting and put that away into an investment for a long period of time, you might find that, you know, the actual equity in your investments might grow as fast as the equity that someone has in their house. Great. That's, that's excellent, Preet. Many thanks. You're very welcome.